rejoicing in the Eucharist. Be entertained, enjoy it yourself, in the support of it. There's one more thing. And that talks about rejoicing or actually not being so much entertained, but not being moved by the evil that happens to others. That's the part of living our lives in the numbness of our generation. And a part of that has been created by entertainment also. I wish I had the statistic of how many murders are shown on television every day. It's thousands. We are not moved by hurt and tragedy. We are not moved by evil being perpetrated against other people. And we, we have got to the place that now we can watch the news and it's not staged and entertained, it's real. I was flipping the channels the other day and I, 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 it caught my eye. It was, it was uh, after I figured out what it was, it was like uh, the world's worst police videos, something like that. And, and it was intriguing. And here was a, a cop car streaming down the interstate car in front of it, and, and they were running, and they were doing over 100 miles an hour, and they were weaving in and out of the traffic, and then he swerved over on a side road and took off up the side road, and the policeman reached out his window and shut out his tires, and great, you know, exciting thing, and it flipped, and it turned, and it hit the tree. And then the commentator said, for simply a speeding man drives to his death. And all of a sudden I realized I had not watched a fictionalization. I had watched a man kill himself. Dead. And then I yawned and turned it off and went to bed. Like we tend to do. Really the thing that started that whole numbness was the day they showed the film of the young man in Vietnam being drugged down the street by a Viet Cong soldier. And they showed him shoot him in the head. And he fell dead at his feet. I think it was the first time in media they had shown an actual death happen. And it started the numbing of our culture. Love does not rejoice when others are being hurt or being deprived of that that they We again, we, we not only are numb, but we tend to be judgmental. Because if we're judgmental, we can stroke our own consciences. We can look at a hungry man and say, well, he could do that. He's just doing that to himself. It's his fault. And then we think that takes the responsibility from us to feed him. Jesus said, feed the hungry. And I've said this before, but he said, this that you do to the least of these, let me tell you, who the least of them are, are the abusers. They're the least. But yet they're hungry. And we're called to feed them. We're not called to judge them. We're called to clothe them. We're not called to judge them. We're called to not rejoice when we see evil perpetrated on a man or a woman or a child. One of the most horrible things that's going on in our world right now is human slavery. And you say, oh, that's a big city. That's Europe. Let me tell you where it will be. It'll be in Bristol on the race weekend. That's where it'll be. There'll be 
van loads of children, slaves, that would be brought in here and sold in our marketplace. And we cannot rejoice over that, folks. We cannot. I can't get to that scripture, so I'll say it. But let me get to the last of this one. But rejoices in the truth. Now, of course, we rejoice or we celebrate the truth of the Word of God. There's no, no doubt about that. That's not what this is talking about. This rejoice, and again, I have the, the original word in my notes that I can't find. Uh, but that one means to celebrate in relief or in compassion for someone who has received a truthful or a just treatment. That, that scripture, and I looked it up in other contexts, context, and, and it was talking about these situations where that when healing would come, the crowd would rejoice because of the healing of this person. Or they would have this compassionate excitement because of the blessing of the realm. When those who were hungry were fed, there was a rejoicing that went on because of their I was thinking of reports that we received here many times. Linda was with us a few weeks ago, and she brings us a report every once in a while. And of course, I've had the thrill of seeing it firsthand. But when you see a little Haitian kid receive clothing for the day, receive a meal for the day, have actually a bed to sleep on because somebody in Bristol cared enough to send him a bed to sleep on. He's got clean water because we were able to take a clean water system and put in the orphanage there. That we celebrate. For us to take that in a nonchalant manner is to disobey the word and is to not show love. I, we need to be celebrating the good things that are going on in heaven. Heaven was telling me yesterday it was a little tight that she could tell that he was pretty excited about the hot dog. And he got his hot dog and he went away. About 10 minutes he comes back. And he still got a hot dog in his mouth. And he said, come on, I have no more. Of course he got his second hot dog. But it wasn't about 10 minutes and he came back and he was still, come on, Celebrate. 